Hey folks, here at OS Reviews. In this video, we'll take a closer look at the exclusive gaming functions of the Sony Xperia Play and what it's like to basically game on this thing compared to maybe an actual gaming console, um, especially here in 2016 and 2017. So again, we're going to go through some of the default programs that you get installed on here, which include Asphalt 6, there's Bruce Lee Dragon Warrior, Crash Bandicoot, uh, um, there's an NFL 11 title on here, Star Battalion, Sims 3. So those are the few titles that you get, and you can install more uh, through the App Store and through the PlayStation Store. Some of those titles have since been altered or removed, but they can still be accessed through a quick query search on Google. Now, the thing to note here is that most of these programs that will show up in this carousel view of Xperia Play certified games is only ones that are you know, come bundled with the phone or ones that you get from PlayStation. However, there are a few exceptions. For instance, this My Old Play Free, which is an emulator of the uh, Game Boy uh, Color and the Game Boy, you can still see will show up here just fine. I didn't have to add anything. I just downloaded the program from the App Store, and it's now showing up under this list of uh, currently supported applications. Uh, and it works as you would expect. I tap on it once to open up the app, and afterwards I have you know, access to the app that I'm currently running. In this case, I'm running an emulation of a Pokemon game. This is Pokemon Yellow, and you can see that it does run very smoothly. There are no ins uh, issues as far as uh, playing it back with the controls. And again, the controller pads on this thing are very fluid and very responsive. I was a bit cynical when I first picked this up just because, you know, it's a very, fairly small system, but uh, all in all, the keys are extremely tactile, and they feel like very solid con uh, buttons, the same type that you would get from an actual controller pad maybe produced by Sony or by Nintendo, so no in no real issues there, and you can see that uh, everything works very well. This is actually sped up by two times, and you can see that it still works just fine, and best thing about emulations is that it doesn't take up too much memory as well, since these are fairly old games and titles now. Um, as far as you know, getting the specific control for you know what to do, you do have to kind of program that yourself. So how you do that is select the menu key once, and then if you go through settings, you can actually take a look at your input. Um, for mapping your keys, since these are special keys, not every single phone will have these keys, and the app is a universal one for Android, you just take a look at your, your uh, mappings uh, and you know your left will be selected to the D-pad left, so you tap on that, select the key that you want to correspond to. Just takes a few seconds to get everything set up to the proper orientation that you want by tapping on these keys, and afterwards you can enjoy your your game playback. Um, afterwards, this specific app does a decent job. But I'm running a free or a light version, which means I can't save a state directly, but I can do in-game saves after I've completed, let's say, a battle or something like that. I can change this uh, speed settings and also look at more things such as taking a screenshot, link a remote uh, device, so on and so forth. So finally, it just opens up as a you know currently running application at the very top there I can toggle into, but uh, let's say I want to look at the gaming experience on another game, perhaps Crash Bandicoot. So Crash Bandicoot is a game that came out in the late 90s, actually. It's a pretty popular title that originally came on the first PlayStation, and it still is a very immersive game. Reminds me a bit of some of those M&M games that uh, also came out a few years later that you play as an M&M figure, go through multiple levels, try to survive, jump through boxes to get points, and uh, dodge things and then hopefully you progress and gain more points. So this is how it works. It's actually a pretty responsive and enjoyable experience. I found the screen to be a little bit uh, dark for some of these uh, more some of these games that have a darker tint to them, the shadows are a bit harder to discern, but really not too bad. Uh, game controls obviously are pre-mapped because it's a pre-loaded game that uh, was designed by Sony to work here, and it runs completely smoothly as you would expect. So no issues here as far as the processor and the RAM that's being built in here to support uh, you know, the functionality of this game. So doing a quick demo, you can see that this is what the experience would be like, and it seems to work, again, fairly, fairly well. Um, other things to quickly note, uh, not all of these games will support what you know are these uh, analog or digital based uh, jog sticks or joysticks uh, since they designed this to take up less space when the entire phone has been closed down. Um, so you'll notice that on here, for instance, this game does not take advantage of these controls or these buttons, um, but some of the games such as for uh, racing, for playing back some more sports-based, uh, action-based games, will take advantage of those keys. So depending on what game that you choose, uh, you might use those controls or might not. Um, so obviously I need a bit more practice on this game. It's been quite a while since I opened this up, but it is a pretty enjoyable title that takes you a few hours of time to kind of progress through and completely beat. So uh, a pretty interesting game to, to quickly try out.
All right, so that is Prash Bandicoot. All the keys and controls feel pretty responsive. The only thing I'll say about the preloaded games and the PlayStation certified titles is that it takes up a large amount of space. It's not compressed, so you have to download and leave a large amount of room on a micro SD card, such as Crash Bandicoot taking up almost, I think, 200 megabytes or so. So if you're downloading over Wi Fi, it even takes a few seconds to complete. So, not as, you know, the best optimization, you know, for a phone with relatively low amounts of memory, but it just makes having a micro SD card ever so essential here. So if I want to take a quick look again at some of the other games that I have on here, you can see that I've also downloaded other emulators for Game Boy Advance, for instance, uh, or Game Boy Color, GBC AD, and Game Bold. But these programs, unlike the My Old Boy Free, were not recognized, you know, as a specific gaming uh, oriented or a, a specific app that was designed for this. So you can see that when I pop this open, it's actually not showing up in this list or in this carousel view. Obviously I can add them manually, but it just shows you a, a limitation there um, from getting third-party applications from the Play Store, for instance, for gaming that isn't officially supported. So I've downloaded actually all the titles, again, the preloaded ones. Uh, you do have to kind of insert a memory card and then you know download them one by one. It takes a few a bit of time to get to get that completely downloaded, but here's the next game. It's uh, Asphalt 6, which uh, does take advantage of the virtual game controls. So let's try opening that up again. It seems like it didn't open. And uh, as this game loads, I'll also mention that the shoulder keys here do work pretty well, but again, not every single game will take advantage of that feature. So let's skip this. And again, you can see that's because of the relatively low amounts of RAM and uh, one gigahertz single core processor, things do take longer to load as far as speeds are concerned. But uh, after a bit of time, it should be loaded. And here's a quick race that's being loaded up. So there we go. Let's just try to fast forward through this. And you can see that the graphics here are pretty impressive. They give you a pretty good view of what you want to see through you know, the game. And again, I can now go. So I have to press on acceleration. And again, I can use the kind of the touch sensitive keys now to control my steering wheels if I don't want to use the analog controls. You can see it's a little bit sensitive, but uh, overall not really too bad. One of the main issues here is that these uh, capacitive controls here, these uh, virtual jo uh, joysticks, seem to be a little bit hit or miss as far as the uh, games supported. So if you download a third party game through the Play Store or use your own emulator, uh, oftentimes it actually won't recognize or find that there are uh, optical controls down below here. It will find the physical keys, of course, but uh, these ones seem to only work with most uh, PlayStation certified titles. So that is something to keep in mind um, and one of the limitations here. Not a huge deal because you already have physical controls, and again, using these might be a more precise way to navigate anyways, but um, nonetheless, you have a secondary option if you want it. So now let's exit out of this. Not really too much of an issue as far as opening up multiple games. It will keep it running in the background so you can toggle back and forth between them, but just something to keep in mind that you can also close them down if you want to save on your RAM. Next game I'm going to show you guys is the Bruce Lee Dragon Warrior, a fighting based game that uses uh, these keys to fight against a component, of course. And let's not enable sound. And let us Kind of fast forward to this. So let's say play. And then using the story, we're going to continue the story that we have left off on. And there we go. It's telling you that you learned a new move. Again, there are a few. This is a pretty simple game as far as the scenes that come before the actual fighting goes. It's just a very storyboard-like effect. Saves it on a bit of animation and graphic processing power. Uh, doesn't have to do too much processing or crunching there. So over here, you can see that the animations during the game is pretty simple as well, but uh, an improvement nonetheless. You have to tap on, again, these multiple keys for fighting uh, against this component. And then once the health bar reaches zero, you basically um, you know, either win or lose if you get defeated. So that's how this essentially works, tapping on multiple key combinations to create various different moves. And let's try and see if we can finish this one pretty quickly. So in this case, time was up, so it's probably 
and you know you lose because you weren't able to defeat your opponent within the period. Uh, and again, this one simply progresses through the various stages based on how many opponents that you would defeat. That's the premise of the game. Um, other things on here, let's take a look at the games. Uh, there is the Star Battalion, if we want to take a look at that first. This is a pretty simple kind of Battlestar, almost a Galactica-based game that you shoot uh, for as a first person, and there's a team that goes with you, and your objective is to take down these enemy ships, uh, but it's a 3D version that has a bit more fancy animations, and this one also takes advantage of the optical trackpad, which is nice to see. Uh, a lot of these games have been partnered with the game Loft to take advantage of that, so be on the lookout for those types of titles if you still want to pick something like this up, and you aren't looking for specific emulation-based titles. And Let's see if we can fast forward through this. Let's go campaign and just tap on OK and select OK. So again, it's loading at this bar on the bottom, so a bit of downtime here. So there we go, the mission has started. Again, I can fire by tapping on this uh, key here. I can aim onto a specific enemy indicated by the red, and I can use the trackpad here also to navigate my orientation. So it works fairly well, and again, it's a pretty immersive game that uh, uh, allows you to get some gameplay on here and shows off more of the processing power of the, uh, of the Xperia play. So this is what this game is like. So finally, if we go on to Sim, this is very similar to what you might find on a desktop version of this game, or also on other Android phones, except we have physical controls, which makes navigation a bit easier and selecting things. Essentially, you just uh, simulate you know, a person with their personality. You can talk to people, build things, buy things, initiate goals, and build up a virtual wor uh, world. So uh, very similar to you know, other types of t uh, games that are quite similar to this in premise, but Sims is one of the original ones that uh, does that. So you can tap on a game, load that up, and then navigate to this virtual world around you. Pretty easy to use, obviously you still have access to the touchscreen if you want to use it, but obviously there's also the added utility of having a trackpad and a virtual trackpad that takes advantage of these controls. So another pretty complex game that works well. When it comes to gaming, the battery life is still decent. I would say that uh, gaming on a more aggressive uh, GPU based uh, game will obviously waste and use up the battery a lot faster, so uh, you might get under you know, four hours of screen on time then, but if you game sparingly in between, it should still last you through a day or two of usage, uh, which is pretty good. So at the end of the day, I have to say as a gaming specific uh, product, the PlayStation Xperia Play actually works fairly well. I like the controls on here. I talked about that before in the retro review and the actual review that we pulled out. Um, but uh, as an emulation product, it does still work quite well. Some limitations is the fact that the screen isn't as saturated as more modern phones. It's a bit smaller as well. And the fact that the virtual controls aren't as uh, sensitive or sometimes won't be recognized with the software compared to the physical hardware keys. But other than that, it still works very well for more light titles, such as original PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Lite DS games will work just fine, but for uh, emulating, let's say, PSP games, it's not going to work because it requires at least a dual-core processor. So anyways, that's a specific look, in-depth look at the gaming capabilities of the Sony Ericsson Xperia.